I'm portrait and fashion photographer Alan Zaki, and this FJ80 has changed the way I shoot photography. Let's go ahead and dive on in and do a review. My work tends to be very run and gun or guerrilla style as it goes, and therefore I love to have a quick and easy way to use an on-camera flash to add a little pop or to make that my key light whenever shooting on location. I was previously using Canon speed lights because they're native to the cameras that I use. I'm a Canon user, I don't know about you, but they're just simple to use and make it so much easier for me to navigate. The Canon speed lights are great, but as I've said in a previous video, which you can check out up there, is that the front face of it or the lens of the actual flash has melted on me before, which made it really difficult when I was using an external battery. That's why I switched over to the Westcott FJ80 as of last year, which is amazing. And it gave me a great quality as well as really compact and lightweight. Uh, the ability for you to actually take the battery off these lithium polymer batteries make it so incredibly lightweight. I don't have to carry around a bunch of double A's with me, which has been super helpful. And it makes it so much easier for me to be able to use this flash on the go, have a backup battery set up and ready to go. And they last me for the entire shoot easy to carry in my bag and ensure that every single consistent flash is going to be the same. So earlier this year, I had a shoot that I needed to have a big, powerful flash that I could use on a run and gun shoot that I was doing. And so I decided to choose the FJ80. Now there are a bunch of other options out there. I know Profoto makes a circular faced on-camera flash, as well as Godox makes another on-camera flash similar to this. However, the Westcott brand really stood out to me primarily because it was a good price and it was something that I could buy right away off the shelf, to be very frank and honest with you. The Westcott FJ80 flash has 80 watt second power and is consistent with a 5500 Kelvin or daylight balance flash. This flash always ensures that I'm able to put it on the camera and consistently get the same color output from when I start shooting to the very end of my shoot, which has been a lifesaver in many of the situations that I'll shoot in, both with portrait clients as well as fashion editorial on the streets or if I'm doing an event, let's say. A lot of the shooting that I'm doing, like I said before, is on location and therefore I need this thing to be able to overpower the sun sometimes or being backlit on a subject or if it's filling in the shadows for the sun or if it's a cloudy day, it gives me this great pop of light in every photo. So I went with the FJ80 because it has the ability to overpower the sun at 80 watt seconds, which is an incredible amount of power and like I said before, the color on it is Amazing. This flash actually has 7.4 stops to it, which is incredible because you can go from needing a little bit of light to needing to overpower the sun on location and it gives you that full variety. When shooting, I tend to love that on-camera flash look or that raw, as some people put it, look. And this flash really gives me that ability to do that. It is a very powerful flash, but it also delivers that very tiny on-camera flash feel on my professional SLR camera. The other wonderful thing about this flash is that it allows you to attach multiple accessories on the front of it, therefore giving you the ability to modify it when you are on location or in studio. And for me, that's really a great thing because sometimes I want to diffuse the front of the flash or I want to make it more pinpointed. So you're able to add a grid, you're able to add a snoot, you're able to add a dome to the FJ80 and it really enables me to get the best quality of light out of this flash. So so let's go into the details of what you get with the FJ80. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was the great thing about this flash that a lot of the other options do not allow you is that this is universal. This specific model of the FJ80 allows you to be able to put this on your Nikon, your Canon, your Olympus, your Fuji, your Sony camera. Now, granted, the Sony also does need another connector or adapter for the hot shoe in order to connect, but the ability for you to take this flash and let's say hand it off to another photographer, or if you have multiple camera setups that you're using, for instance, since I use a bunch of uh, analog cameras and I'm able to put this flash on there, it works seamlessly for all of the cameras. So that's something that really was a huge factor for me in purchasing the FJ80. Westcott does make their own FJ80 creative kit. However, I opted for the Godox AKR1 pocket flash light accessories kit. That is a mouthful if I've ever heard it. But the reason primarily for this was because, well, first things first, uh, they had it available. And secondly, Godox's accessories actually fit on the face of the FJ80, this 
amazing flash by Westcott. So the one that I primarily use the most is actually this dome, which all you can see in this overhead here. Uh, and they're actually all magnetized, which is amazing. So this actually just clicks directly onto uh, and stays on securely onto the top of the FJ80 flash, just like that. And it gives you the ability to soften the light that is coming out of the flash. Uh, I absolutely love it. It gives me the ability to soften the light, but it's not necessarily fully softening as much as it's omnidirectional, right? So what that means is that it takes the light, it hits this dome and then spreads it out. So it actually bounces the light even further. And the other uh, details I'll actually go into once we get into the interface itself of the flash, but you're able to move the actual uh, array of the beam of the light itself in the settings. So if you wanted to go wider or if you wanted to be a tighter beam of the light, you're able to change that in the flash itself. The other accessories that come in this kit are a snoot, uh, which is something that I don't really use, to be honest. It's not something that I would necessarily uh, use that often. This kit comes with a lot of accessories. Uh, so these barn doors are kind of fun. I know that some photographers like to use this. Once again, it's magnetized, so you can see there, uh, but you just stick this directly onto the front of the flash and it gives you almost this like old Hollywood type of flash, but these barn doors are movable. Therefore, you can really make a small beam of light uh, that you want to shoot on your subject. I personally wouldn't necessarily use this that often, but it's a great way for you to modify the flash. Another accessory on here, and this is something that I would definitely use more often than not, uh, are these honeycomb or a grid that actually goes on the front of the flash just like that. So you, it actually narrows the beam of your flash. And the cool thing about this one as well is that you can actually put another, you can put another accessory on top of that. So if you wanted to put the lens actually on top of that as well, you'd actually be able to put that on there. And that's also in another diffusion. Or if you want just the lens uh, to soften or broaden the light, those are some sticky magnets, uh, you're able to stick that directly on the front of the flash as well. Uh, the, the lens on the front of the flash is already pretty diffused. And I said, you can change it, which is great, but you can actually add another one on front of that. And it'll make it even softer. Okay, so there's those. Uh, the other cool thing, and this is something that I definitely use if I'm shooting events. Uh, I don't shoot weddings, but if I'm doing a corporate event or something like that, uh, I will use this white card that it comes with. You can see here, uh, mine's kind of bent up because it's been in this kit, uh, but then it comes with this accessory that mounts the card on there. So you're able to put the white side up Goodness, there we go. Clips right right into that. And then you'll actually use this accessory ring that has the little knob on it. And that actually just pops on. We'll do it for our overhead shot. So that pops onto that like that, as well as the magnets on the back of that. So you're able to then stick that on the front of the flash with the magnets. And then what I would do is actually put the face up. So like this, and then what happens is that when you flash the strobe or when you flash this flash, the flash goes up, hits this card and then bounces onto your subject. So this is really, you'll see this a lot in weddings and you'll also see this a lot uh, when you're doing events because it gives an ambiance of light, but it doesn't hit your subject directly. This is also really great if you need just a little fill flash if you're out on location uh, and want a little bounce and don't have uh, necessarily a fill or fill card, I should say you can use this as a means to be able to uh, bounce a little bit of light into there. So this is really helpful if you want to do that. The other accessories that comes with are some correcting gels. This is a warming gel. So if you want it to warm it up. So this is if you were, let's say indoors or you want to add a little bit of fill, uh, but it doesn't really match the lighting indoors. You're able to use this warming gel. Clear ones are actually different stops, so you can actually cut the light. Um, and then this is a stronger version of that. The green gel is actually for, if you're if you're inside and you're shooting with fluorescence, this is actually a corrector for that. So you'd put that on the face of the flash. And this is just the lightest version of the, I'm guessing a CTO, uh, which is a, you can kind of see it there. Um, it's a little bit of a warming gel, but it is not overly, uh, it's not too strong. It's a lighter version of it, right? So this whole gel kit comes with it as well. These actually pop into here. I should probably show you this. You'd actually take these gels and pop them into uh, the holder here. And then this holder goes directly on the front of the flash, just like that. You can see, and that way you're able to add a little warmth to the flash, which is really cool. So. 
This is a great creative kit. Like I said, this one's from Godox. They also make one by Westcott. The main reason for me purchasing this one was, as uh, some Angelinos know, I went down to Sammy's and this is what they had available. Uh, and they were able to share the fact that this does work on the FJ80. Uh, so I was totally down to purchase it and I needed it for the event that I was shooting. So there you go, I purchased it. Um, and all of these are linked down below if you wanna go ahead and check them out. They're really great accessories to have for the FJ80. And I know that uh, both this one, along with the creative kit that you can purchase for the FJ80 from Westcott is also very, very useful when you're doing creative or portrait photography. Like I said, this is from Godox. It's in this cute little carrying case, has a little handle on it, zips up, and it goes in the side pocket of my bag, and I'm ready to go. And I have all my accessories I need for the FJ80. So now we're gonna go into the overhead and go into the details of what this FJ80 flash is all about. So the FJ80 seen here comes in this great little carrying case. It actually has a loop on the back as well as um, a little hook. I always mark all of my things with the my name, Zaki, on it. So you'll see that everywhere. As you'll see, this has the FJ80 uh, Westcott batteries, which are lithium polymer. Uh, they hold amazing charge and I think allow you on a full charge to give you about 400 pops. I've been using this flash on location as well as in studio and I've been able to use one battery all day and I'm using it probably at a level of maybe three or four uh, and I've had no problems with it. Actually, I just recently did a Christmas photo shoot which you can see some of the photos here. I was able to use this FJ80 attached to the camera and used it at power six for the entire shoot and I went through one battery and was able to replace it and only needed about half the battery for the rest of the shoot. So it was really easy to use and made it simple for me to be able to continuously shooting all day long. So, and that shoot was probably over six hours or more. So there you go. The FJ80 has this wonderful color screen on large touch screen on the back. And as you can see, it says tap to power on. There's the Westcott logo and it powers on. Now, I know there's been compl complaints that it does take a while for this thing to boot up. However, I found that it's not too much of a hassle. I know that some event photographers really do have a problem with it because it's not quick enough for them, like that of a speed light. However, I don't mind it because I'm not in a rush to get it going. Let's just go through the menu. As you can see here, there's four modes on the back of it. So the first being a host. Now the host is actually, if you want to turn your Westcott FJ80 into a trigger with other multiple flashes by Westcott, you're able to. The great thing about this is that it has multiple channels for you to filter through ABC and DEF. So you're able to control up to six flashes as well as if you want your flash to be powered on while in this mode, you're able to hit this button and either turn it on, as you can see, or off by the little indicator there. Right now it's set to the off mode. We'll go ahead and turn it on. You're able to choose what channels you want each of these to be. And then you're able to select the power output of each of those flashes, right? So the great thing is that you press these up and down buttons and they can go intense. Or if you go ahead and tap power itself, it goes up by one single stop. You can put these in different modes as well by changing, pressing that to TTL, or if you wanted a manual mode. Uh, the other option you can do is clicking here and changing it. You're able to see the different speed at which you want to shoot. So it has a high speed sync, has front curtain as well as rear curtain uh, abilities on it. So I usually keep it in high speed sync. The other thing I mentioned before is how large of a beam you want the actual flash to be in. So by pressing that button there, the spread of it rather, you're able to then go up and down and change the zoom on the flash. So we're going the wrong way. We'll go to up button and you can see you can go tighter and tighter on the actual flash itself until it goes to the very back. It's a very narrow beam there compared to if you go all the way forward, it will give you the widest spread at the top there. Press okay and we're good. Client mode. This allows you to use this flash as an auxiliary flash on, let's say, a stand or off camera. Now, it gives you the ability to either use another FJ80 to trigger it, Westcott FJX3M or the FJX2M universal wireless flash trigger. I've included a link below for that if you would like to take a look. 
The great thing about this setting is that for client is that you're able to click on it and change the mode that in which you are going to shoot in. And you can go all TTL or you can change the mode altogether. So if you press mode and then use the arrows up and down, you can do TTL on this as well as manual. It's a great way for you to set this up and use it as its own separate flash off camera. These are different groups. And then these are the different channels that you can set it to. So I'm going to go back to A here, which is what it was set to, and press OK. Wonderful. Press the home button again. And the third option is the speed light. Now, this is the one that I primarily use the most. The speed light mode for this FJ80 flash is the go-to that I use because, well, it mimics that of a speed light. The best thing about this flash is that unlike the speed lights, you're able to get more powerful flashes out of it, as well as more control over the ability to modify the light, as I mentioned before. So as you'll see here at the top, you'll see the little Canon logo, and that's where you're able to change what camera you're actually using. So as you can see, Fuji, Sony, Olympus, Lumix, Canon, Nikon, and back to Sony again. So this option is amazing because it gives you the ability to swap cameras at any given moment as long as you change what camera you're using. So for myself, I am a Canon user, so we'll go ahead and leave that on Canon. Voila. Now, once again, I mentioned this before, you're able to change what sync you want. I have it on high sync. You can do it on front curtain, back curtain, or high, and we'll leave it like that. Your power inputs, like I said, you have 7.4 stops on this. You're able to go all the way up to nine as the output, which is the most powerful as it will go, press OK. And then you're also able to change the tenths of this as well. So if you want 8.3, there you go, it's a lot of power. And this button on the left here is the flash test. Woo, that was bright. There we go again. And as you'll see there, that is your testing of the flash itself. And the last settings that we have on the fourth thing is the settings themselves. You're able to change the screen brightness on this. So it's set to two, which is normally, or is the default setting. If you go up, it just keeps on brightening it. Uh, the brightness level is up to five. Well, uh, you can tell it how long you want to, uh, for it to take before it auto powers off, as well as uh, using the Sync X and these RTID is actually the ability for you to sync with other Canon flashes, so other speed lights, as I mentioned before, you're able to automatically sync them with the FJ80, which is amazing. The thing that I love about this flash really is, I mean, between everything else that I've shared already, but the ability to use this flash with the modeling light that is built into this LED chip on board inside the face of this flash, which is amazing because I'm able to turn it on. And as you can see, it almost acts as a flashlight. You put it on auto, or you can set it to one power, two power, three power, or off. But the ability for me to see in the dark, which tends to happen a lot, or I can make this into a monster light. Ah! No, but the ability for me to see uh, my subjects while I'm shooting them is so crucial. As I mentioned before, I was shooting with, for my friend's Christmas candle line, and I could not see because the whole room was completely dark. And so the ability for me to turn on this light and be able to see my subject as a modeling light was so, so helpful. I know that on location, this is also super helpful if you're doing a shoot at night and you need the ability to see your model for focusing reasons, this thing has a powerful output of about mm, a stop or so, but it gives you a modeling light that you're able to then see your subject uh, or whatever it is that you're focusing on and be able to shoot them as well as how you're able to maneuver the light so you see how that modeling light or how the flash is going to shoot and ultimately uh, cover your subject. So I find that to be super helpful. I know that there's nothing like that in the speed lights that I was using before. And yes, I will say as a disclaimer, there is the ability for you to run out of battery battery a lot faster when you are using the modeling light, but to me, it doesn't eat up that much battery and it wasn't that difficult for me to be able to use the modeling light for the shoots that I've done thus far. One of the only major downsides that I had with this FJ80 flash, which I'm not used to, was there are no ports on this flash itself for you to be able to put a pocket wizard or another trigger onto this flash. Before I would use a PC import and I would be able to connect my pocket wizard to my speed light and then use the other trigger the transmitter on my camera and be able to shoot from it. 
This is a really wise thing for Westcott to have done because you need to use their in-house or on-brand triggers in order for you to fire all of their flashes, whether you're using the FJ400 and FJ200 um, or another FJ80, they all are able to read from one another, but you're not able to use uh, an auxiliary trigger of sorts to fire this. That's my only downside, but you know, at, at an inexpensive price of about, I think, $60, you can, you can purchase the FJX3 trigger, uh, which then you can use as a remote for all of the flashes that you have. So not only the FJ80, but any other Westcott branded flashes that you may have will work with it, which is really great. So speaking of batteries, this lithium polymer battery by for the FJ80 is a really lightweight and easy way for you to be able to power this flash up. You can buy extras of these. I definitely recommend having an extra. It comes with one charger uh, and one battery when you purchase the FJ80 from Westcott. However, having an additional battery has kept me from losing the ability to have to stop the shoot and recharge, but also the ability for me to just swap batteries quickly, put the other one on the charger and keep on going, which is what I'm all about. So overall, I'm really happy with the FJ80. I think it is a great, versatile and affordable way and ultimately universal way for me to use on all of the camera systems that I shoot with. It has a great amount of power in it and it has great color accuracy, which is crucial for the work that I do and the ability to run and gun and use a flash that puts out plenty of power for any shoot that I'm doing. I definitely recommend the FJ80 to anyone who's out there who likes shooting portraits, fashion, or is shooting events, whether that's weddings or private company events. It's a great flash to have in your kit in order for you to get the best quality light out there. So definitely check out the Westcott FJ80. Say FJ80 one more time. Maybe I should put a ticker on here and see how many times I said it. I think a thousand. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please go ahead and give us a big thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button if you want more content like that. Check out this video right here. It's a behind the scenes look at one of my photo shoots. And until next time, I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you guys.